Let, let's start with somebody that you've covered that I think you've covered a lot and I'm really embarrassed to not know much about him. I think this is like old school coffee cell. You've been through stages, okay? I've been through stages and phases, true. Uh, so a character named Dan Locke. Yeah. Uh, who is he? You've uh, you've uh, exposed him for cult-like uh, human and uh, his cult-like practices. Who is he? What has he done? So Dan Locke is sort of, he's gone through a number of iterations, but he was kind of this like sales trainer guy who really made a hard push into what he called high ticket sales. And he was telling people that they could kind of escape the, the nine to five rat race if they just learn high ticket sales and they can have the life of their dreams. Basically, it's like, I'll teach you to sell, but I'll teach you to ask like not only will I teach you to sell sell you that pen, but I'll teach you to sell it for fifty thousand dollars instead of a dollar, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I talked to a lot of the people who had taken this course because it was pretty expensive. I think it was like twenty five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. And and mind you, the people who are taking it are like teachers and like people who don't have a lot of money. And then you take the course, and immediately you find out, okay, well, there's an upsell at the end of the course. You're not ready. You need to go from like high ticket closer, which is one of the products to inner circle or like the level up, right? And all of these courses are structured like this. So they spend a tremendous amount on Google ads to get people in the door, promising the dream. And then once you're in, you're actually not done being like the product. You're actually in the system that tries to upsell you again and again and again and again. And eventually you're paying monthly and you're getting more and more. You're constantly paying for access to Dan Locke's wisdom and like ideas. And fundamentally, this sales system wasn't working for people. I mean, I talked to like, for example, a teacher who put in like $25,000, was in debt at one point and has nothing to show for it. I know. And it was sort of these tactics of pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. And then anytime anyone would complain, he would try to silence them. So yeah. I heard from like, um, funny enough, this lady was a teacher as well. She put together a Facebook group basically saying, I think this guy's a scam. His course didn't work. It's not working for a lot of people because fundamentally the promise of turning someone from a non-salesman into a person who's making six figures selling is not an easy thing to do. It's not just a matter of just like take my course. But anyways, it wasn't working. She created a Facebook group about it and he like sues her or and was like legally pressuring her to stop doing that. Um, and I realized like somebody has to speak out about this and everyone who is, is getting silenced. So I was like, I'm going to use my platform to raise awareness to this. And people came out of the woodwork. I mean, saying that this guy defrauded me or he scammed me. And I want to just really quickly t take a second, take a beat to explain why get rich quick schemes are different than let's say selling a water bottle and saying it's the greatest water bottle ever, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes people wonder, they go like, well, doesn't like Nissan say their car is going to make you happy and then it doesn't make you happy? Like, why is that different from the kind of advertising of a get rich quick course? I mean, both of them are sort of promising things that aren't true, mm -hmm. but you get something, you take some kind of a training, you know, isn't it the same thing? No, here's why. There's this concept in economics called elastic demand and inelastic demand. What it essentially means is that if I raise the value of this water bottle, there's a point at which you're just going to be like, no, it doesn't make any sense, right? But there are areas in our lives where we have desperation around them that can get deeply predatory very quickly because they have no, there's no elasticity around their demand. For example, your health. If you get cancer and I have the pill that will solve it, or at least let's say I don't, I have a sugar pill here, but if I can convince you that this pill will solve your cancer or treat your cancer, you will pay any amount of money you have on this earth to, to get this pill. That, it, But obviously that gets really predatory really quick because selling something that isn't real is almost as compelling as selling something that is real, right? So- this happens in the get rich quick space too. There's any amount of money you would pay to make a lot more money, right? So these products have inelastic demand. That's why you see what is essentially a few webinars getting sold for $2,500. Courses that literally have identical videos on YouTube, like very similar course curriculums that are selling for such extravagant amounts of money. And 
I think there can be comparisons made to college because obviously there's similar like questions about benefits. But in this case, there's not even statistics available that even shows the average person gets something out of it. That's true of like, if you go to college, your average income will improve, right? That's the justification there. There's none of that. There's no case studies. There's nothing backing their extravagant claims of you're going to make all this money. You're going to make all this wealth. Instead, they're just, as we said before, they're selling you a dream. So that's why I find all those like types of get rich quick schemes so problematic. And uh, that's why I've railed against them for significant amount of time. What have you learned from um, attacking, exposing some of the things that Dan Locke is, is doing? What, what have you learned about human nature and, and fraudsters and gurus and so on? Great question. So I think one of them is that there's this systemic problem that the the phrase, there's a sucker born every minute is very true. There is no end to the people who will fall for something like this. And the problem is, is because there's just no end to need and want and like, and just lack. I mean, it's easy to, on the one hand, criticize people's greed, but a lot of times you have to put yourself in their shoes if you're at a dead-end job, you have nothing going for you, you don't have the money to go to college, you don't want to get in debt, fair play, where do you go, right? As you said, there's somebody who's there saying they believe in you, they believe you can make six figures. You know, you're you're going to believe in that. And so I really felt like it made a lot more sense to tackle it from the other side, from the side of people that can stop, that can basically be exposed and basically be um, have sort of like a negative put on their work. I mean, they're largely going under the radar. So I kind of felt like, you know, do you want to educate the, do you want to like blame it on the victims and say, you should have known better. You should have done this. You should stop. But there, there's no end, no end to that. Or do you go after the grifters themselves? And so that's what I realized. I realized like, that's the tactic that I went with. 